All right, so we're gonna do a teardown of this Epson 1960 Powerlite. Uh, they're pretty great projectors. They're about 5,000 lumens. Pretty okay throw ratio. However, in my line of work, using these for concerts, different art installations and such, uh, they can get dusty. And so that's one of the things we're gonna show today is how to tear this down and get into the light engine and get into uh, the lens because that's where a lot of the dust will reside and of course that's not good for the electronics it makes it run hotter but it will also significantly dim the projector so I've done this to a few others um, and so we'll just kind of do it step by step uh, you'll need some tools pretty much a small Phillips a large Phillips same with the flathead uh, tweezers are excellent and this guy is really handy for some of the small wiring harnesses in there. Uh, you could probably get by with a few others but this is the essentials. Okay, so we can just go ahead and loosen the lens there. Of course make sure you're grounded or you have already uh, taken some anti-static precautions. Okay, you're going to just pull that out. See, there's a bit of dust on there. I like to use an air compressor to blow all this stuff out. You can use a canned air, but what happens is that you get that interesting residue on there. So, I take this guy off here. Notice that little pin here. So, you can push it. Come on, dip. There we are. Got this guy. Pretty dusty. There's a hidden screw right here. Take that one out. Now I have over here um, tape for each of the areas and I put some double stick tape on there. So that way you can secure it and I'm not gonna roll around. All right. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna flip it over and take all the screws out from underneath. Pretty straightforward. hear the slight drumming from the wall. It's my roommate practicing his drums. Okay, <clears throat> pretty crude, but you can just dump out the screws. Make sure we got them all. Except for one. Sometimes you just need a little extra help to get out. There we go. Take these, place them on the outer cover. Just 
two more here on the bottom near the power supply. Okay, so you can flip this guy over. <clears throat> and there's one more right here that we've got to take out too. There we go. Okay, might as well get the rest of the port screws while we're at it. Okay, so I'm going to take this lid off, carefully remove it. Don't go ahead and yank it off because you'll notice there are a, a couple of cables that attach to the top. So we can grab our handy little green tool here. Just unclip that ever so easily right there. Perfect. Ribbon cable pulls out. These two guys. We're going back and forth, they'll come out pretty easily. Bingo. We can take our lid, set it aside, and now we see <clears throat> we got the motherboard, we got some of the exhaust happening, of course, the lens, and where we just had the bulb. So, you could easily just dust off this area, but if you really want to give it a thorough cleaning, we're going to need to go one layer deeper and get into the light engine and in this case get into the lens. So to do that we're going to need to take off the motherboard and first we'll remove all the different wires attached to it. Here's the ribbons you can see it's even labeled green, red, and blue. So let's go ahead and start with those then. Now the way these these kind of latch up, they kind of pop up. So just gonna ever so gently pry it. Perfect. And these are pretty fragile and nearly impossible to replace. So I would definitely be careful. There we go. Got the ribbons out of there. I'll just start right here. It's really, really handy to take pictures of this so you know exactly how it goes back together. Pretty forgiving. Um, however, some of these things only go in one way, so I would always snap a picture so you can be sure. Put it in the right way. Excellent. All right, um, next we're gonna have to kind of do this wiring harness here. This is the infrared sensor. Pretty simple, just three wires. Bring it up to there. 
And through there, we can go ahead and remove the port cover now. All right, so we see that all our cables are disconnected. So we can go ahead and take out the motherboard screws now. So we'll start with this big one down here. Definitely where the tweezers come into play. Okay, we'll start with the motherboard screws. Okay, now I believe those are all the motherboard screws. And you say we have everything disconnected, so we can go ahead and take that out. All right, just let those ribbon cables gently pull through. So nothing snagged on there. Once again, don't pull too hard because there is a hidden cable right there. Once again, you can kind of pull that out pretty easy. Sorry, we forgot one right here. There we go. I'm going to set that aside. <clears throat> and then now we have some more stuff. So you can see that revealed the light engine here. And that's where our ribbon cables go into, to the actual LCD components that tell it what color to be, what image to be. So you can see we have, in comes the light, and as you open this up, you'll see how they get split up into the component colors. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the light engine. Um, we need to take that hat off and blow it out, and also get to the lens. As you can see, it's pretty tight in there. Lots of different stuff happening, so we need to figure out an easy way to get that out. Now I found a pretty easy way to get that out is just to remove uh, the screws here. There's a few others as well. And that's what actually connects this whole assembly to the larger frame. <clears throat> now that makes it nice because then you don't disturb uh, a lot of the other stuff. Lots of uh, finely tuned, finely placed wires and cables and such. But also we need to make sure that this thing stays pretty stable. On the inner parts here, they are finely tuned, uh, calibrated, aligned, and such, so that the red, green, and blue recombine. And uh, we don't want to disturb that. So anyways, just check this out as I take it apart. Remove that tape here. I'm going to move this black wire out of there. This is actually the temperature sensor for that region in the projector. All right. I've got a couple more here we're going to need to take out. I'll just do this one by one. Okay, that's away. We're good on all the other fronts there. So these black screws here are what we want to take out. I'm kind of in there. Alright. Let's see where's the other one at. Right there.
get that one in there. It's certainly out of the threads. Okay, at this point, we should be ready to take this out. Oop, forgot one thing. <clears throat> That's to take this cover off of where the lens goes. So we'll just thread these out of there. All right. Said, we can now take out this. Killer. All right, we'll go ahead and set that aside. Move this out of the way. Bring this back into focus. So one of the things we're gonna do is take this top cover off and we can actually get to the prisms inside. Notice the blue glue here. Whenever you see something like that, it means don't unscrew me. That's a calibrated part. It's very important to keep that as it came from the factory. Careful not to scrape it, pull it straight out. Good stuff. Okay, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there's a good amount of dust on there. And that will definitely contribute to the overall brightness of the projector. Let's see if you can get a good angle on everything going on in there. So, we're gonna move on and grab our handy dandy air compressor. All right, so once again, canned air works, but this is nice because a lot more of it and there's uh, less chance of a residue. So I'm just gonna give it a once over here. Okay, so now that we've got most of the dust off there, let's go ahead and get in the fans. One thing you want to do is when you go to blow out the fans is you need to put something in there to stop that fan from spinning. Um, if it spins a lot, it can wear out the bearings. It can also uh, send electricity back into the system because as we know, a fan uh, can be used as a motor.
looking pretty clean in there. I'm gonna save this for last. Come over here, let's get this guy. Very fragile, be careful. Never direct. Okay, try and get it at an angle. Check the PSI over here. So now let's take the lens off. One thing we're gonna do is put this back on. If I were to tip this over, uh, it would all those glass plates would fall out. I've done that, it's not fun. There we go. All right. <clears throat> now, check this lens apart. We're gonna wanna take these screws off here. Notice that there are threaded pieces that can easily fall out. So what we're gonna do, make sure that doesn't happen, is take a piece of gaff tape, or really any tape, and place these 
over those set screws so they don't fall out. There are other ways to do this, but this works pretty simply and effectively. Make sure to be very careful of these, very fragile. Turning it around. Two more there. Okay, now we've done that, let's go ahead and take the lens assembly off. Make sure to apply a nice, even pressure. These are lock nutted in there. They may take a bit. You do not want to strip those. Take your time. There we go. I'm going to take the lens off. Let's go ahead and set this back down. Okay. So we can see that's where our image comes out of and into the lens. And we have the lens itself. Now this one doesn't have a bit of dust in it. Some are worse, but we're gonna tear it down just the same. So to do that, you're gonna grab your small Phillips. And you can start with these two screws up top, take off the metal flashing. Now these are in there pretty good, so make sure to apply a nice even pressure. They're also vapor tiny. Make sure to have a safe place for them. Okay. There's another round of them above there. These are gonna even a little more tight. Notice I'm setting the corner of this down, not flat on the lens.
Okay. <clears throat> After that's done, this will pull off. Notice that the bottom curved part is on the bottom of the lens. Alright, got that off. You can see into there pretty good. A few other pieces to take off here. You don't need to take off this one. However, this one is one we want to take off. Notice the small screws here and here. Also note its orientation when you turn them all the way to the left. Holding this part as the base piece, you can see the difference between the focus and the zoom. So when they're both turned to the very left, they're lined up. So are these screws. It's very important. Let's put this back together. Let's go ahead and unscrew that. There we go. Next side. There we go. Smooth, just like that. <clears throat> On top here, you see another three Phillips. Now, notice how that will poke out. It's very handy to retract. <clears throat> down here and further take it down. There we go. That happens. Excuse me. So now, once again, kind of hard to see with this camera perhaps, but there is a bit of dust in there. Great. Let's go ahead and blow that out. Excuse me again. Let's go ahead and put this back together now. <clears throat> so let's start with the lens body. Like so. Nice snug fit.
Okay, top is back on. Put the slider back on. Remember, all the way left, all the way to the left. Up nicely right there. A small hole. There it is. Make sure you get that really snug in there. And if you don't get it snug, it'll kind of wobble a little bit. It usually means you need to come back in there and give it a full turn. There we go. Okay, next is that plating. <clears throat> Recall that the rounded side goes on the bottom. Like so. Okay. I'm kind of being a pain in the ass here.
as you can see these screws are incredibly small and can be difficult to put back in there. There we go. Okay. Okay, right, there. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, there. Okay. 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 Okay, okay. Oh,
And there you have it. Everything works out just fine. Brand new projector.